So today we're going to go over bone tissue and specifically we're going to talk about the bone cells. So I wanted to remind you that bone tissue, just like all connective tissue, is going to have a ground substance, fibers, and then cells. The bone tissue, the hard bone tissue, is, as you recall, made out of a ground substance called hydroxyapatite. But that is mostly calcium carbonate and a phosphate together. So the ground substance is mostly the mineral part of the bone. And this part of the bone, if it gets, if there were too much of it, the bone might actually be a little bit um, crumbly, but it makes the bone hard. That matrix, that minerals makes it more hard. The fibers of the bone, as you recall, are collagen. And those fibers actually make the bone more flexible so that it doesn't crush all the time. It actually makes it more flexible. So together, this makes up the, the strength of the bone tissue. So as we get older, though, we get more of the ground substance and less of the collagen, which is what can cause some osteoporosis. The cells, then, of the bone tissue, there's um, several of them. There's osteogenic cells, which actually are more like stem cells, and they produce the osteoblasts, which are the young cells that help to build bone, but also help to repair bone as well. And then those will actually mature into osteocytes. So these three primary cells, and then there's a fourth cell that I'm going to go over with you as well. So I have a picture to share with you about the cells. And I wanted to make sure you remember that the cells are actually housed um, inside the bone, but underneath that periosteum that's around the bone and then underneath the endosteum that's inside the bone. So recall that under the periosteum, there's going to be cells that can actually help grow the bone. And the beginning cell that we talked about the osteogenic cell is also called the osteoprogenitor cell. You might see in some areas, some places. These are the stem cells. So these will actually start out growing some of the other cells. They'll divide and grow into some of the other cells. So the osteogenic cells help to generate some of the other osteo or osteonic cells. These osteogenic cells will develop into the young osteoblasts. And I call these our builders. It helps me to remember that B there in the word, that these are osteoblasts. These are the builders. You see it forms the bone matrix. These osteoblasts are underneath the periosteum and uh, will actually bring in the calcium and the phosphate from the bloodstream and deposit it into the bone itself. So these will help in bone deposition depositing the calcium and the phosphates, the minerals from the bloodstream. So these are our builders. As these mature, they actually will change into an osteocyte. So these are the mature cells. These help to maintain the bone tissue. And what happens is the osteoblasts bring in the minerals and the calcium. They actually end up getting surrounded by this matrix. And so the osteocytes are inside the matrix. You see them housed here on the picture of the bone inside the compact bone in those concentric circles of lamellae. Also the osteocytes will then be housed inside a little sac called a lacuna. If you recall the cartilage cells were also housed in a sac called a lacuna. You don't see it here in this picture but the osteocytes are held in there. So again the osteogenic cells or the stem cells they'll also develop into these builders the osteoblasts which will mature into the osteocytes which are encased inside the matrix. The fourth type of cell is this osteoclast over here and the osteoclast are actually from a different origin they originate from the um, white blood cells and the macrophages. This osteoclast I call them the cutters so you see the difference there is that C in that word. So calling them the cutters helps me to remember that these will literally cut away at the bone. 
and will send the calcium and the phosphate back into the bloodstream to help with muscle contractions and the heart muscle and all the other uses that is needed in the body of calcium. So these osteoclasts will barely cut away a little bit of the calcium at the time. This is called resorption. Resorption is just cutting away at the bone a little bit and again sending those minerals out into the bloodstream. This is not reabsorption. The cell is not reabsorbing the calcium. It's actually cutting it away. So these osteoclasts are a little bit like this scrubber, okay? As it resorbs the bone, it's kind of like um, resorbing the bone is kind of like this scrubber on the board, just taking a little bit of the surface away. You see how it doesn't just scrub into the board, right? It just takes a little bit of the surface away. So it's just gonna take a little bit of that calcium off of the bone and send it back into the bloodstream. So that's what the osteoclasts do. So those are the bones of the cell, of the bone tissue, sorry, the cells of the bone tissue, osteogenic, osteoblasts, osteocytes, and then the cutters, the osteoclasts.